imagine one day you forget what is a sine curve. Will you be able to recreate it from scratch? Where do we even begin if we wish to rediscover the concept of sine? That's what this video is going to be about, and it all starts with us trying to draw a few simple triangles. Before we begin, let's forget everything we know about sine. In 3, 2, 1. Pretend you're the arrowhead in the middle of the screen. We'll be giving you three simple commands that you can follow so that you can draw any shape you want on the screen. The first of such command will be getting you to move forward. We could click this and you realize you moved forward by about 100 units. That's because of this command given here. So if I change the 100 to say 50 or 25, you'll move forward accordingly. So that's the move forward command. Now if I want you to face right by about 30 degrees, I could type RT space 30 so that you go right 30. So this could be right 90, so it's a 90 degrees. The next command you need to know is to turn left. So we can tell you to turn left by clicking here or typing LT30. With these three simple commands, we could draw many different interesting shapes. For example, if I wish to draw a simple square, or we could draw something more complex like a star. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a step back and try to draw some triangles, which appears to be straightforward at first glance, but there are many interesting mathematical properties we can discover along the way as we try to draw some triangles. So let's start with the simplest of all triangles, maybe the equilateral triangle, which means that it has equal sides. Let's try to draw a triangle that is a little bit harder. So the sides and the angles are all different. Let's see what the process of that will look like. I've sped up the video by about five times here because the process of drawing a non-regular triangle is quite tedious. I basically have to change the lengths by one unit, 0.1 unit, 0.001 unit each time just to see whether the triangle aligns and closes fully. And I'm not even sure whether it does at the end of all of this. There's got to be a better way to do this. As a lazy human being, I'll do everything in my power to figure out a better path that is less effortful to draw triangles. The goal is to be able to draw any triangle we want easily. Here's where we're at. We have already drawn an equilateral triangle. We can try and draw the next easiest triangle I can think of, which is the right angled triangle. Part of the reason why this is tedious is because we're trying to guess the length of this side of the triangle and this side of the triangle. So we could cheat a little bit by creating a horizontal line here first so that it's easier for us to gauge the distance. I'll show you what I mean. So if we were to draw a horizontal line first, then we'll recreate the right angle triangle. We only need to eyeball one of these connections. At this corner, we can introduce another command called home. Home basically allows the arrowhead to jump back to where it started. This means that there's one less side of the triangle for us to worry about. This makes drawing more right angled triangle on this horizontal line easier. Let's revisit our goal and see how far we have progressed. We have drawn an equilateral triangle. We have now drawn a right angled triangle as well. Are there any other sub goals we can achieve before achieving the larger goal of drawing any triangle we want? To answer that question, we need to do a slight detour and explore the properties of triangles. Say you're given three sides of specific lengths and have to form a triangle. 
you'll notice that no matter how you arrange the sides into a triangle, you'll always end up with the same unique triangle. It's what makes them so rigid and strong. For example, we often use them to make triangular trusses for our bridges. Interestingly, instead of three sides, you could still define a unique triangle with just two sides, provided you know the angle between them. What if we only have one side of the triangle? Now, we need to know the values of two angles instead of one. Pushing this even further, can we still make a unique triangle if we're given three angles instead of three sides? No, you can't. There are infinite possible ways to draw the triangle, but since they all share the same angles, they are similar triangles. A sub-goal that we can achieve next is to be able to draw any right-angled triangle if given three specific angles. Hopping back to where we left off, let's draw every possible right-angled triangle for when the angles are 45, 45, and 90. If we copy and paste this triangle, we can double all of the forward commands and make a triangle that is twice the size of the previous. Instead of copying and pasting this entire chunk of code every time, we're going to be creating a custom command called triangle45, where we call triangle45 and the triangle would automatically be drawn. We also need to introduce a variable called scale so that we can determine what size triangles we want to create. At this point, we should name some of the angles and the sides that we've been using to make it easier to reference to them in the future. Let's call this angle theta. And let's call this side the opposite side because it's opposite theta. And for the same reason, this side shall be called the adjacent side. The long side shall be called the hypotenuse. Okay, I have no idea what's a good way to remember why it's called that. Maybe if any of you know, you can let me know. Now back to drawing. One critic I have of this custom command, triangle45, is that say if we want to create a triangle of hypotenuse 1, I'll have to calculate the scaling factor and then input that as a variable every time I use the command. I don't want to use my brain to do this calculation every time. And so how can we improve this command? By studying the similar triangles closely, you may notice that the hypotenuse and the opposite side scales proportionally. Meaning, if I increase the length of the hypotenuse, the opposite side increases by a fixed amount every time. Mathematically speaking, this is represented by the equation opposite is equal to hypotenuse times a scaling factor. For the case where theta is equal to 45 degrees, we can see that the scaling factor is 70.71 divided by 100, which is equal to 0 0.7071. Adding the scale factor into our custom command makes it such that we could input the hypotenuse length directly into our custom command. Now that we have easily cleared this sub-goal, my next question would be, is the scaling factor the same for every value of theta? So let's test this out. We will create a new custom command for when theta is equal to 30. As you can see, the scaling factor of 0.7071 no longer works when theta is equal to 30. This means our hypothesis that the scaling factor is the same for all values of theta is wrong. Not all hope is lost. Since we're able to figure out the scale factor for different values of theta, one naive approach to solve this is that we could measure the value of scale factor for every possible value of theta and place it into a table. Yes, it is quite a lot of hard work to craft this table. But if we were to put in and invest this effort in the beginning, our future descendants will simply be able to look up this table and get the scale factor value for any value of theta they want. So cue the music. Ta-da! We've created a table that allows you to easily look up scale factor values given any value of theta. I shall name this table sign table. You can access this table in your code simply by typing sign open bracket theta close bracket. 
This will give you the scale factor value for the particular theta. This is particularly helpful because we can then recursively call the custom command triangle multiple times, but each time increment theta by a little bit so that we can see all iterations of the right angle triangle. We are almost there. We can now draw all right angle triangles for every value of theta. To draw every possible triangle, we just need to realize that every triangle can be split down the middle to form two right angled triangles. And there we have it folks. We can finally draw any possible triangle that we want. A big part of this is with the help of our trusty old sign table. If you want to visually see what the sign table or the scale factor represents geometrically, what we could do is this. We know that the vertical red line of the triangle is represented by the hypotenuse times sine theta. And in this case, since hypotenuse is 1, the length of the red vertical line is literally sine theta. As you draw each triangle, draw the red opposite side to the right of the unit circle and watch as the sine curve appears as you vary through theta. This video is in part inspired by the folks at Talking Maths in Public. They've issued a challenge this month to animate sine curve from a unit circle and show how you do it. Our initial idea was to simply show how you could recreate this with less than 30 lines of code. But we wanted to go a step further and really break down how we could rediscover mathematical ideas for yourself through this platform or through this medium of thinking, which is the computational environment. It's our first time making such a video, so if you guys have any thoughts or comments, please let us know. But that'll be all. Peace.